I figured since the Carnal Caves guy's eighth crab novel comes out today, June 22nd, that it'd be a good a day as any to start my Guy and Smith Files series. Here we go. Werewolf by Moonlight. I love the title to this book. It fits perfectly with werewolf lore. Obviously. This is the 1974 Guy N. Smith novel. This review will contain minor spoilers. This is also the first novel in Guy N. Smith's bibliography. The plot. Philip Owen goes to do something in the barn one night and gets bit by a black dog. There's a legend behind these black dogs, but for now let's focus on Philip. He begins to show signs that he is a werewolf. For one, his finger is getting an inch longer or something like that, and uh, just weird things are happening. He's craving meat, he has heightened senses, and then one night, in the moonlight, he becomes a werewolf and it begins to prowl the black hills and stalk his prey. Animal or human, it doesn't matter which. Basic, formulaic, and cliche werewolf story. That's what this is. But I would be lying if I said I didn't have a blast with it. With such a flimsy and short story, it becomes rather clear that a lot of corners would have to have been cut which they were. People are genuinely accepting of this werewolf crisis. When our werewolf for the story, like I said, Philip Owen, tells his parents of his curse, his father immediately looks into it, and then he comes to the conclusion that, yep, my son's a werewolf, and it's all in like a paragraph. I love it. I guess things like build-up and plot points don't really need to be discussed. It's pulp horror, what do you expect? Basically, if your third finger is an inch longer, or something like that, like, it's hard to remember because there's so little going on in this book, and then you kind of take things for granted. Um, then, if you do have that, then you're a werewolf. There's no other way around it. Like, I just don't naturally have a longer finger, I'm a freaking werewolf. It's funny, but nice to have this added lore. The werewolf also can't cross running water. That can open up a whole new can of worms. Like, wasn't there a Dracula movie where he couldn't do that? I don't know. This is a werewolf book. Running water. I don't know if that's actually werewolf lore or not, but if it is, it's kind of stupid. There's something else. Like, I know, I know there's another story or movie where they can't cross running water. Oh, well. Also, this novel has a type of twist that is usually poorly done, but this time, it's boiled down to the townsfolk not realizing something so obvious. However, by the time I closed this book, I felt oddly satisfied. It has a poorly executed story, dumb characters that are way too accepting of things, and easygoing, as well as having a weak twist. Yet it's Guy N. Smith's writing style that really sold me on this book. Not to forget that this is Guy's first book, first book, it is patchy but well told. He cemented himself to the foundation of a cozy, environment. Descriptions of the Black Hills, Moonlight, and streams are very Celtic. I swear, if they would have added a gypsy to the story, it would have been freaking perfect. The exteriors are vivid, and the interiors are warm with the roaring fireplace. It does come a bit of a shock when two characters go to see a movie. A werewolf movie, nonetheless, in a theater. Up until this point, I felt like this village was cut off from the rest of the world like some tropical island in the middle of nowhere. But then they go to a movie theater and I'm like, oh, I guess they're pretty close to civilization. As for the characters, there's Gordon Hall, Margaret, and Vic Gunn, Philip, and his parents Blodwin, and Gwen, or Gwen, I don't know how you say that one, Owen. 
as well as Sergeant Ford and his men like PC Winter and others. There are other minor characters like Peter Pike who goes to the movie with this girl, but they are only used to steer the cast of characters in the right direction. There's not much to be said about most of the characters in this book, except that Margaret Gunn is married to Vic, but is secretly sleeping with Gordon Hall. And at the end of the book, of course, it's revealed, and it's so dumb, like, how they handle the situation. Like, I understand, let's put aside our differences to hunt and kill the werewolf, but after that, I'm gonna kick your ass. No, that, that never happened. It's more like an understanding on Gordon's side and just hostility to his wife and an extra precautions for Vic and Margaret. It's like, I think a lot more would have happened. Going into another direction, the descriptions of the woodland and moonlit sky are vivid and paint a gloomy picture over the pages. It makes you feel like you should run away at a decent speed, much like the book's pacing. The pacing in this book is a bit uneven. I mean, it's 105 pages, and Philip becomes a werewolf about 15 pages in, and then on the 50th page, he kills his first human. I think it's around the 50th page. Like I said, it's only 105 pages. It says it's 110 pages at the end of the book, but the book doesn't start until page 5. So yeah. Subtraction! You would think with the quick setups and a short of length, this would be a fast read, but sometimes Guy's vivid descriptions go on for a smidge too long. Going back to the characters of Margaret and Gordon, like I said, they're having the affair. They go at it like three times that I'm aware of. I mean, there could have been more off page, but you know. But it's so infuriating how it's handled at the end. Speaking of three, within the book, there's really only three kills and one isn't even directly caused by the werewolf. So, let's get into the next part. The gore! A mangled woman is discovered after a very odd exchange between her and the werewolf. It's not technically rape, it's more... How would I say it? Um, misunderstanding. A man is decapitated via buzzsaw, which was a pretty gruesome scene, and a woman has a heart attack. And that's about it. For humans, as for animal killing, several rabbits and deer have their throats ripped out and intestines eaten. It's mutilation at its finest. It's not too gory, but there are some highlights. This book is quite a doozy. While yes, it is well written and has a good kill or two, the story as a whole was a little hard to swallow. It's a short book with some minor piecing issues, but I think if you're either into guy's work or just enjoy pulp horror, then definitely give this book a look. You might enjoy it. If not, it's because you don't, don't like pulp horror. I guess. Well, overall, I give Werewolf by Moonlight a 2.5 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, and what was the first Guy N. Smith novel you read? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, Lion Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon. The links are in the description below to leave comments and subscribe.